Listen, I found a new form of life right here in New York City. I just spotted it down by the water, but I think it went this way. So let's just, come on, let's go. It's really shy, so just don't spook it, okay? I see it, I see it. Oh, got it. Oh, okay, hey, got are it. you okay, dude? Yeah, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. I got it, I got it. Oh. Psych! Oh! Okay, I was just kidding. Uh, this is not a form of life. This is something called a strong beast. It's a toy model of a real life strong beast. The strong beast is the brainchild of Theo Hansen, a Dutch artist and engineer. He started making these kinetic sculptures, which he refers to as a new form of life. And since about 21 years, I try to make new forms of life. My question is, why does he consider this a new form of life? And what does that say about the future of our relationship with technology? This creature does not need millions of years for evolution. The Strombeast evolution happens almost every single year. It started with a simulation, a line drawing animation which helped develop the 13 holy numbers. I wrote a, a genetic algorithm to find out which length of tubes I needed to get the right movement. The gluten period is where the animal was crafted for the first time in the real world. The Strombeast is held together with one key element, yellow PVC pipes. The Chorta period marks the use of nylon straps over tape, which allows the legs to support the weight of the body. The Caledon period is the heat period, which means Theo started using heat guns to manipulate and bend the pipes. Wings were also added to allow the animal to use wind as its main source of energy. They don't need food, they need wind. The Tapetum period is where Theo develops cell machines, which allows for the exact DNA to be reproduced and copied to create herds of the same species. But then, Theo cheated. He cheated in the lignitum period. He started making beasts with wood for a period of time, which allowed them to grow enormous. After his little rendezvous with wood, he moved back to PVC, his true love. The vaporum period brought the ability to store energy in a wind stomach or plastic soda bottle. Ooh, okay. Muscles nerves, and a primitive brain. A brain, yes, a brain. It can make decisions based on the world around it. He's legitimately building artificial intelligence out of PVC and tubes. One beast can hammer a stake into the ground to keep it from blowing away during storms. Another can sense the water line and remember exactly where the ocean starts and where the sand begins. And when the wind dies down, it can use wind stored in these plastic bottles as fuel to keep it going. I needed the principle of evolution. Evolution doesn't come up with a solution which is most optimal, but you come there fast. Okay, so what's the point? I mean, thinking this thing is alive is a lot like thinking your toy doll is alive. There are a lot of things that are alive that don't resemble life, and there are a lot of inanimate things that are lifelike. The Strombeast is 100% one of those things that seems lifelike. So what if we just pretended that this was alive? This changes the relationship between what is made by humans and what is born out of biology. I was gonna go do a bunch of research and try to prove that this was alive, but no, it's, it's not scientific, it's a feeling. It's a feeling that I got when I was a kid when I read this book. Wait one second. I think I left it back here. Here it is. All right, it's a book called The Robot Zoo. This is a book I used to have when I was a kid. They're illustrations of animals, except they're made and explained using robotics. You've got the platypus, the bat, you got the giraffe, and the whale. This one was my favorite. Of 
course, this is just another artist's interpretation, but it encapsulates this idea where you can understand life by understanding it mechanically. You can understand mechanics if you understand it organically. So when we look at these complex systems, when we look at the internet, when we look at artificial intelligence, what if we understood that as being a life form, as being alive? This is more of a conversation starter because I really don't know the answer. Just like, it's a question that just hurts my brain almost. And I think it's an important question for today's day and age when we're starting to see these technological developments and how they do kind of mimic life in some sort of way. What if we create a technological invention that performs the same basic functions as an animal that we consider to be alive? I don't know, what happens? I don't know. And I think we can even look at the idea of the Strombies as being alive, not just the creation itself. Because of the internet, Theo Hansen was able to post these numbers online, and many, many people are creating these beasts. Uh, I found out that the strand beasts were multiplying behind my back. Now, of course you think that these strand beasts are made by people. This virus of strand beasts came in my mind 21 years ago, and it made me a bit crazy, or I have this disease of not thinking of anything else anymore than strand beasts. And this disease is epidemic. Lots of people are infected by it. So, what do you think? Is this a new form of life, or is it just an interesting kinetic sculpture? Does it really matter? And hopefully at the end of my life, they can do it on their own. I can kick them out of the beach and quietly die knowing that they will live on, on the beaches forever.